Hi guys, I have a word from the Lord for you titled Signs in the Heavens Above and I'm going to just share it with you guys. So in the last season, the Lord has been using astronomical language to, to speak to me. Um, it's been amazing just seeing him using signs and, and, and that language to really catch my attention and focus it on, you know, the heavenly realms, the celestial realms. Now, in Joel 2, we read about the outpouring of God's Spirit upon His sons and daughters, maidservants and men servants. They will prophesy, dream dreams, and, and, and see visions. And we are seeing that we are living in those days now where not only people who hold a prophetic office, but, you know, normal sons and daughters of God who are operating in that realm of dreams, visions, and moving in the prophetic gifts. And we have seen this increase from the time of the Azusa Street Revival, and that movement went all the way across the earth. And we are still going to see that increase more and more and more in the coming days. But what the Lord wanted me to focus on was verse 30 and 31, which I'm going to read. So Joel 2, uh, 30 and 31, it reads, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So what the Lord highlighted for me for 2023 was signs in the heavens above. And even in these two verses, it mentions two celestial wonders, um, a solar eclipse and a blood moon. Now, I believe that we are going to see such an increase of signs in the heavens above in 2023 like we haven't had in previous years. And I know we have organizations, for example, NASA, who study, you know, stars, um, it's an astronomical organization, and they make predictions based on science and based on their, you know, their studies. But the things that we are going to see happen are going to be unpredictable, okay? And these stellar wonders, they are going to be connected to an increase of angelic activity on the earth. And this is where you see that connection, like in the verse, it talks about uh, signs in the he wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And that's where we're going to see that connection um, where there's an increase in angelic activity on the earth, which is tied to um, signs in the heavens. Um just a quick uh, side note here. <laughs> the Lord gave me a word, I think it was last year, um, called uh, Angelic Reports, where he, he, he showed me, I was watching television and there was, um, I was watching the news. And the lady who was um, giving the news reports was reporting on angelic activity. And there were videos that people were sending in where angels were caught on camera, like on smartphones, um, and this footage was being sent in and was being broadcasted on circular news channels. So watch out for that. That's, I mean, that's coming. So I'm really excited to see that happen. And these are the signs. These signs are going to bring many into the kingdom and into faith. But we also know that even with these signs, there are those who will still not choose to receive the Lord Jesus as a Christ and Savior. Okay, but back to this word now. Um, so, talking, going back to the stars and the signs in the heavens above. Now, many believe that the star of Bethlehem was, an, was actually an angel. So, we have a record of the star of Bethlehem appearing to the Magi. But we don't have a record where Herod or people who were living in Jerusalem or Bethlehem at the time of them seeing a new star in the sky. And this suggests that this angel only appeared to the Magi. Stars also tend to move from 
east to west in that direction just based on the rotation of the earth but this particular star moved south when it led the magi from jerusalem to bethlehem it moved south and then it stopped and hovered over where joseph maria and jesus were living which is very un unusual <laughs> for a star and this is just going back to what i said where those who, who have studied the stars based on, on science and, and worldly knowledge, they will not be able to predict the things that we are about to see unfold in the skies. It's going to be amazing. Now, Revelation 12 verse 4 talks about the dragon whose tail drew a third of the stars from heaven and threw them to the earth. And we know that that is the company of angels that went with Lucifer when, when he fell. The prophet Daniel sees a similar vision of the little horn that rises up even up to the host of heaven and casts some of the hosts and some of the stars to the ground. And you can read this in Daniel chapter 8. So this is really interesting because we know um, there, there are angels which are called hosts, but now we see that there are also angels which belong to a certain cl classification called stars. And these are some that were thrown down with Lucifer. Revelation 9 verse 1, it also talks about a star fallen from heaven to earth who was given a key to the bottomless pit. Now the celestial wonder that was the darkening of the sun which follows the opening of the pit. And once again, you see the connection between the angelic activity um, and um, a wonder in the earth and a wonder in the heavens. Okay, so Joel tells us that there is that these signs are preceding the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So the signs are for us to know the times and season that we are in. Just like the sons of Issachar, right? It was said of them that they knew the times and the seasons, okay? And if you look at Genesis, which is really interesting, <clears throat> because that word times, if you look at the strong concordance, that word times there, that they knew the times and seasons, it, it talks about an appointed time, it talks about seasons, it talks about, it talks about times. And um, in Genesis, um, in verse 14, it reads, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. So I really believe that the sons of Issachar were not only walking in the understanding of the times, but that they were also walking in revelation, in knowledge, in counsel, because they then had to counsel King David about what Israel was going to do, but they also had an understanding of the, the stars, the celestial signs and wonders to understand the times and seasons that they were in. This next part is for those of you who already have some kind of knowledge about this, but one place where your destiny scroll is also stored is in your star. Now, you might or might not know that in the occult, when a child is born, they map out a star, in the, a new star that appears in the heavens that is connected to that child, and they use that information for wicked purposes, which I'm not going to get into. You might know this if you're from Africa or Asia. I don't know if they do it in the West, but this is a, a, a well-known activity. Now, the Lord was starting to speak to me about 2023 being a stellar year and divine destinies that have been lost or stolen or held up, how they are going to be set free and unlocked. This is going to come about as more and more of the sons of God step into their new creation identity you're going to see their destinies unlocking and i even believe that we are going to witness this as 
um, as seeing the heavens light up in a way like in such a like a brighter way i i, I believe it we're going to see reports of just how um how the, the 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 skies are so much brighter and and that is being that is tied to the the sons of god stepping into their destinies to do great exploits in this new era that we have stepped into now i'm going to read from Genesis, Genesis 15 verse 5, you all know the verse, um, it's when, um, okay, let me just read it, so, then he, God, brought Ab him, Abraham, so God brought Abraham outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them, and he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now other versions say that God brought Abraham outside and said, look at the stars and tell them. And it's almost like, um, you know, that Abraham was to speak his destiny, to, to, um, to speak the promise of God to the stars. And that that record of that promise was um written written in the stars right another interesting place um to read which is related to all of this is daniel 12 verse 3 to 4 and let me read it quickly it's the angel gabriel and he's um speaking to daniel also about you know the times at the end and he says to him those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever so there is that heritage that is connected to father abraham there is there are those descendants who will walk in wisdom like you know just like the sons of Issachar, they will walk in wisdom and they will also do great exploits bringing many to righteousness and these sons of god they are going to shine like the brightness of the firmament we are going to see that happen in the coming days and it is all beginning now it is all starting now thank you jesus thank you jesus so many are going to be set free to step into their divine purpose and their divine destiny as they as they receive an understanding of their new creation identity who they are and who they were created to be and this is lock this is literally unlocking their destiny which has been held up or been stolen because of sin corruption or wickedness okay now i've got one last thing for you guys <laughs> And this is like a last minute message that the Lord gave me last night. Um, we were in a prayer with three other women um, praying into the new year, or actually after the new year, <clears throat> the first five hours from midnight to five o'clock in the morning. Never done that before, but it was quite interesting and was amazing. But two words that the Lord gave me in that prayer time was event horizon. Now, Event Horizon, once again, like he's just using all this terminology to speak. And Event Horizon, it's like a boundary that, um, that surrounds a, a black hole, okay? And the black hole, I'm sorry, I'm going to try my best to explain it. But in a black hole, the force of gravity is so strong that it just pulls everything in, even, even light. And the Lord was speaking about, um, if, if you look up the definition, it, it, it is a boundary of a black hole, but it is also used um, um, to, to symbolize the points of no return. Okay, And he was giving me that, those two words last night. And when, when I pressed into it, what the Lord was revealing was the point of no return is that we, all of creation, has entered into a new era 
and it is the supreme will of God. It is his divine purpose and it is by his power, his force that has pulled all of creation into that new era that we are stepping into and it is just the point of no return so the systems and ways of doing things as we have done them previously they they just not they're just going to collapse in 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 the new thing that he has brought us into they will not be able to be sustainable and they just they're not going to work anymore so what we want to do as a body we want to have we want to understand the times and seasons that we are in. And that time is that the season we are in is that we are in a new era. And what God is doing in the new era is it is completely different to how we have done things before. So what you want to do for yourself personally and for your, I don't know, for your church body, you want to align yourself with the new thing that God is doing. And we do that we by not having fear, but using discernment. So we're using wisdom, we're using knowledge, we're using revelation, the counsel of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, might, the boldness to, 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 to join and partner with what God is doing and not to be afraid and hold back and hold on to the seasons of the past. And there was a time when the old and the new were kind of working, you know, parallel, but that time is over now. That that period of transition is gone. It's past now. And it is time to step into the new. And it is literally there is no return. There's no going back. So really just seek the Lord about that and about how you personally or how your church, your group of believers can start stepping into the new things of God for the kingdom era because there is such a demand like this new era has has there's such a demand for believers who are walking in that new creation identity and it is not only for those who hold offices it is for the son the daughter the old man the young woman the old man and the young man, sorry, <laughs> and the young women, um, the man servants, the maid servants. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Um, yeah, and just going back to that Joel 2 verse as well, that it will be poured out on all flesh. His spirit will be poured out on all flesh, not only on believers. So we are going to see so many people from the tribes and the nations coming into the kingdom by the spirit like by supernatural power of god they will be coming into the kingdom all right that's all i have for you guys um i hope that encourages you and gives you something to think about and something to pray about in your prayer time but i just want to pray quickly for the divine destinies father i just thank you that you um that you are working lord in your sons and daughters working in them to release them from all bondage in jesus name i just thank you father that you are bringing many into the light and bringing many into the full knowledge and revelation of your son jesus christ and everything that he um yeah everything that he made available to us as your children in jesus name that we can step into and i just thank you for stars that are aligning in the lives of your children that their destinies are unraveling and unfolding and that they start to walk in those things that which you rose on their destiny scrolls from before the foundations of the earth. Lord, release revelation in this dimension. Release more and more revelation, Lord, and understanding. In Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father, that you are raising up those who understand the seasons and the times. 
and can give counsel to others in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I just thank you for the sons of God walking in pure light, manifesting the glory of God here on the earth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Amen. Bless you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Bye.